Hey guys, looks like uh, everyone's getting ready for lunch here, so gotta yeah, just hold off for another like 40 minutes, and then you'll be able to get some food. So, all right, so I'm here. I'm John. As she introduced me as, uh, I work at WP Engine, and I work on the Enterprise Support Team. <laughs> That's right, go to WP Engine. Um, Really quick. Yeah, sure. Happy? I am happy. Well, just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I work on the enterprise support team at WP Engine. That makes, uh, means I work specifically with all our, our top tier enterprise, like uh, our global, global companies that are hosting on our platform. And I, I've been, uh, spent about a good four years living overseas. I lived in Singapore in college, and then uh, I lived in South Korea, and then Mostly for three years, I lived in Shanghai, China, and then after I came back to the States a couple years ago, I started working at WP Engine. Um, also from like from California, uh, as I was, I originally went to San Diego State, and I have a double double degree in journalism and geography. So most of the information you're probably going to hear me talk about is coming from a place of like a from the mind of a journalist, more or less, about looking critically at the way censorship works in a lot of different countries, but primarily about China, because that's where I have the most experience from. If any of you have any questions during the talk, please raise your hand. Last time on, on Twitter, I was uh, more people were asking me questions in Turkey than I actually had in my talk afterward. <laughs> so I learned a good lesson from that one. But what you're going to learn from me is uh, essentially is like why and how WordPress and non-WordPress sites get blocked in different countries, uh, which plugins you might want to look out for as they might hinder uh, performance or uh, affect the security of your site in different countries, uh, what you can do if you find out that your site is actually blocked in a different country, because this is always a big deal. Um, every once in a while, WP Engine, someone comes up and says, hey, our site's blocked in Russia. Hey, our site's blocked in China. Hey, our site's blocked in Turkey. What can we do? How can we fix this? And so that's always a big deal. And then uh, if you are savvy enough, also you can you try to teach you how to work around the censored web, what you can do if you want to develop, if you're in one of these countries, or how you can try to get this information uh, with it in mind when you're developing new sites. So first, we got to talk about different types of censorship. And there are main four types of censorship. So the first one we have is government censorship. And my example here are when city councils and local governments ban books. That is a, the most common type of censorship that people think of, especially in the United States and in different countries. You know, we have Catch in the Rye, Kill a Mockingbird, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings in 1984, all books that are banned because the children, always about the children. <laughs> uh, and so the other type of censorship we have are, is religious censorship, and we have an example of uh, the expulsion of uh, Adam and Eve from, from Eden. And the painting on the left was a fresco. It was uh, painted in, in 1428, I think. But then about 100 years later, some fig leaves were add, added to the, uh, to the painting. And so the one on the right is the 1976 restoration of, of this painting. And so this is a, a, like a, a really interesting example of religious censorship that uh, someone's religion or, or belief system is affecting works of art or your own work. The ne next we have is um, moral censorship. Is anyone recognized what this photo is from? Anyone want to? Who knows? Yeah, do you have an idea? It was a Howard Hughes film. Yes, it was a Howard Hughes film. It was called The Outlaw. And uh, uh, that's Jane Russell. They actually talked about it in the movie uh, The Aviator. Um, but essentially, moral censorship is when people find this can be the most dubious and scary type of censorship, mostly because um, everyone has their own different kind of moral ground on what's offensive and what's not offensive. And sometimes that can cause things where uh, some people believe in 1941, this was considered one of the most salacious and sex-ridden movies that had ever been made. And it's just Jane Russell had like a bra specifically made by Howard Hughes to like accent parts of her body, obviously. Um, but so this was a type of moral censorship. This movie was banned for two years before it was actually released. And this was a, a, an interesting case that kind of changed the way the film industry worked. And then lastly, we have also uh, something that's really important if you're a journalist or you want to disseminate a lot of information, and that's self-censorship. This is where you choose not to publish something or you not choose not to do something because you are afraid of the ramifications. Now, there are reasons to do it, and there are reasons not to do it. Uh, importantly, in this case, we here we have La Frontera, which is a newspaper in Tijuana. And they had an issue where 
they had to stop publishing the names of the reporters and stop publishing the, the social photos that were uh, really common on, on the weekends, where people, here's like pictures of these rich people at these parties because they ended up becoming targets for the cartels. And so when the journalists are getting becoming targets and they're not publishing what they think is right because they're fearing for their own lives, rightfully so, they end up self-censoring themselves. So this is a really important kind, and uh, this is something you run into a lot in, in places where you have issues with censorship is that you end up self-censoring yourself because you don't want to you don't want to say what's right. So specifically when it comes down to web censorship is that there are all sorts of different kinds. Um, right now in China, the big thing is domain all over the place, and we'll get to country-specific issues a little bit later. But we have domain and IP level timeouts, connection resets, content that's just removed by ISPs, uh, government directives, DDoSing, things like that. Uh, man in the middle attacks that are uh, like state-sponsored, a big deal that was recently was um, the Chinese government organization uh, hijacked Baidu, which is China's biggest uh, search engine, hijacked their analytics JavaScript file. So anyone who was connecting to a Chinese-based website going through the Great Firewall would have a, uh, a, an injected JavaScript file in, put on their site. And essentially, the JavaScript file made the user a zombie to DDoS GitHub. So around April, GitHub was DDoS, and it was related to a Chinese government attack. Um, government ISP directives, these are things like where they say, hey, in order for you to operate legally in this country, you need to do these things, or you can't operate. This is really common, just a kind of pay for play. Uh, trolls and hackers for hire, uh, getting more into that later, but in countries like in China and Russia, there are government paid or ISP paid trolls who just go online and just kind of stir the pot of discussion, steer things to make everything sound better than it probably is. And then, of course, lastly, is judicial retaliation, which is where you do something and you get caught and you get tried and put in jail or you get fined. And so this happens a lot in countries like Turkey. So. So uh, how is WordPress specifically uh, affected? Obviously, as we all know, uh, WordPress is a quarter of the entire internet, and so it's a big deal that WordPress uh, is being used. So if a quarter of the entire internet is using WordPress, you've got to, it's, it's not something you can just kind of look to the side about. Um, and then as Matt Mullen, we talked about last year, we have more non-English downloads of WordPress than English downloads, which means that there are a lot more countries in the world that are using WordPress, and not all of them have the open internet that we have in the US or relative openness. Um, and then uh, we have other issues like uh, internet sovereignty, which is the idea that each state has their own right to their own internet, essentially. But the internet is not a global force for good. It's not a global entity. It is a state-specific entity, whereas each country has the right to maintain and use the internet in the way that they see fit rather than using it as it was envisioned as for everyone. Um, it comes down to like internet sovereignty goes down to segmentation. And in Europe, we have issues with uh, the so-called right to be forgotten acts where you can be told uh, that I don't want Google to, to be looking for my name anymore. And you can put in something to, if you're in France and say, please remove my content on Google. And uh, recently, France is trying to get Google to apply the right to be forgotten to all of Google's operations, which is going to be an interesting fight. And then uh, obviously, because WordPress is about democratization of the web, WordPress is obviously very affected by that. And it's something that affects all of us. So now we get down to six big countries that, so there are a lot of countries that have worse internet. Somalia and obviously, and uh, Eritrea and, and Kenya are some of the worst in the world, but they're not big economic drivers. And I'm trying to focus more on countries that uh, are economically important to the United States and the rest of the world, things like that. Especially with Iran and uh, the recent treaty between the United States with the nuclear sanctions and all that stuff. So it's going to be coming more important here in the coming years. So first thing when it comes down to Turkey is that, uh, so this is an interesting thing. In April of this year, there were many reports from a lot of big organiz news organizations that WordPress.com was actually blocked entirely in Turkey, which is true for about five days. And after that, it was unblocked. But the thing is, is on the, go on the internet right now, you can still find information. And people only say that it's still blocked in Turkey, even though it's not. And you, that's one thing I talked to about people in Turkey on Twitter a couple weeks ago is it changes a lot. Um, 
a specific blog post that are anti-government, they get targeted, they get takedown notices, Twitter gets takedown notices, and a lot of times Twitter obliges with them. And so th this is a, a, a big deal. Turkey has, uh, their political climate is changing r a lot right now, and it's causing a lot of friction with the internet. The current president, uh, Erdogan, uh, he said that he wanted to destroy Twitter a couple years ago. And, but the previous president, when Twitter was blocked, had his own private Twitter account that he was actively using, even though he blocked Twitter himself. So, which I thought was really funny. This is something that I that was told by a lot of people in, in Turkey. Uh, and then, so also, there's a really great website called ingeliweb.com. Is that it tracks uh, all the domains that are, are are blocked in different countries, specifically in Turkey. So right now, uh, when I took the screenshot about a month ago, there were 82,000 known blocked domains in Turkey. And this is important because if you're trying to figure out if, if someone is viewing your site properly, this is a great resource. Um, at WP Engine, we've had someone come to me and say, hey, my site's blocked in Turkey, what can you guys do? It turned out that his server IP wasn't blocked, but his domain was blocked. So I told him, well, but there's nothing we can do on our end, I, I, we could recommend that you just get a new doma domain name, and that could help you ensure that you're not gonna get blocked anymore. So then we have Russia. Um, there have been a lot of recent Russia is very transparent about it, its, its censorship. There are uh, the 2012 decree about uh, issues against the internet, and they have their anti-LGBT uh, laws, and then earlier this year they had their illegal memes law. I don't know if anyone saw that. So Yandex, which is a really popular Russian social media site, essentially they, the Russian government, by an act of the Duma, said that certain kinds of memes are illegal in Russia. They cannot be posted. The most have to do with disparaging like celebrities and other personalities, but it's it's kind of hilarious. And this is an actual real article from the Washington Post, by the way. They actually used a meme in their article, which I thought was <laughs> kind of funny. <laughs> so, and there's also a really awesome article by Adrian Chen from uh, New York Times Magazine called uh, "The Agency." It talks about the trolls for hire who are paid by a. a, a a essentially ru like Russian government-backed entity that goes on community message boards in the United States and just makes stuff up and like causes like little panics and they also steer conversations in different countries and it's really interesting. Um, and then as far as the, as far as technically go, they have an infrastructure called SORM, which was used during the Olympics uh, last last year. Um, it's a surveillance mechanism that's used to block and monitor different kinds of people's work, and it's it's been around for almost 20 years in small iterations, but as the internet is growing and they're kind of using it differently. So the next one is, are you blacklist? Uh, this is something actually a customer at WP, WP Engine brought to my attention once. It's a really awesome website that will list IP addresses and domain names and a government uh, document related to why the takedown notice was coming in, in Russia. We had an instance where a customer had a IP address that was related to a previous uh, anti-government newspaper that was blocked, and that IP address had been filtered and passed down for, I guess, a couple years from different websites, and it turned out that they just, it was not their site, so we moved them to a different server, and all's well. So, India is a really interesting case. Uh, India doesn't have as much uh, of a huge infrastructure for censorship, more than they have a interesting discourse online about what should be. It's a lot like in the United States, where it comes mostly related to moral panics and things like that that end up things that end up getting blocked. So there have been two big acts: the 2000 and 2009 IT Act that deemed uh, objectionable content illegal and allowed the government to take them down. The thing is, as usual, um, when it comes to close to elections, politicians force websites to go down just so they can kind of get their constituents' uh, support. So, and then le recently, uh, there was a big deal uh, for some reason uh, or another, but uh, there's a big deal when it, like, something like 800 big pornography websites were blocked. And it was such a big deal in India that eight days later, they reversed it. So, <laughs> so it's, it was really like it's a it's a big deal in India, I guess. I don't know, um, but uh, also after the uh, 2009 Bombay uh, hotel attack, a lot of WordPress sites specifically are getting targeted because they are, according to the government, used for radicalization websites. That people use WordPress for radicalization, 
which uh, can be the case, but usually it's on smaller shared hosting or using something like WordPress.com. Um, and then we get to Vietnam, which is an interesting case because it's still a communist state, a lot like Russia, um, and they target dissident WordPress users, and sometimes social media sites like Facebook and Twitter get blocked. But most interesting is that a recent report that I found said that Vietnam has the savviest web users uh, who live behind an internet-controlled state, meaning that if Facebook is blocked, people have more of a means and more ability to get around that kind of block using like a VPN or other services than any other country that most often gets, gets blocked, which I find really interesting. Um, and so and Vietnam is really growing, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of changes are coming there, and it's, it's gonna, a lot of people are going to be seeing how it's going to change in the next couple of years. So then we get down to the Middle East in general. It's a really complicated system because there's all, all these different states, but essentially is that uh, something that was developed originally by, I think, Secure Computing, and it's now owned by McAfee, called Smart Filter. It's what's used if you've ever worked in an office where they block Facebook or they block Twitter. They use these sa the same software, but for the entire country. And apparently, Iran uses a, un an unlicensed version of it <laughs> uh, to block all the content. Like, they block Facebook and Twitter and stuff in Iran, and it's all used by a hacked uh, like American so piece of software, which I, some people theorize it was maybe bought by a Saudi Arabian company and then, or a like, Qatari company, and then they bought it off of them, but it's a whole other thing. So uh, lots of individual blogs, but countries like Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Oman, United Arab Emirates, they all have some form or another of mostly related to LGBT and religious-related censorship, which is, um, which is causing uh, some problems with, with WordPress. So some of these other countries I'm talking about here, these are things that are personal research projects that I've had, because I find really interesting, that, but it's when you get down to China, which is going to be the next one, it's going to be the biggest, it's going to be the most complex, and it's probably going to take the most time out of this talk. And so this is, if you're in Qatar and you go to a, a blocked website, this is what it looks like. So they're pretty upfront about it. It's not like in China where they just, something just doesn't work. This is, this is just, it's a, hey, we're blocking you. So this is me, this is me on the Great Wall of China having a good old time, walking up the Great Wall. Goal was, oh, my goal was always to go to the top, the top one right there, stop and take a picture, on a, have my pants rolled up because it's an unseasonably hot day in May in Beijing. Um, and then I was there for a while, and then after I started living there, and then I kind of looked like this. Oh, that didn't work. I kind of looked like this. <laughs> so there's the Great Firewall. There, there, you know, there's the Chinese flag, and there's me crying like a baby, realizing I can't be on Facebook anymore. So. And so I learned immediately that in order to do anything in China, you need to be able to, uh, if, especially if you're an expat, you need to pay for a VPN to do anything. So essentially, China has the most pervasive form of internet censorship in the entire world. Uh, it's mostly related to a, the idea, the Confucian idea of a harmonious country, a harmonious state. It's like 3,000 plus year old idea, but essentially is that the harmony of the Chinese internet is more important than individual uh, blogs and sites being blocked. But it also gets down to uh, some other things that we'll talk to. It causes the most trouble with WordPress in China than any other country because many of, uh, of the Alexa top 500 sites are, blike, are blocked. Facebook, Twitter, WordPress.com, Blogger, YouTube, Flickr, Dropbox are all blocked in China. You can't access them. If you, get, if you go to those websites, you'll get a connection reset. And for about two minutes after that, your internet just won't work. So. Yeah, like, yeah, they send you a connection reset, and then essentially your IP address that you have on for your for your ISP, it just it, it stops working for other websites. Everything gets connection reset for the next minute and a half. So, and China has the world's largest internet population, so it kind of is creating its own little bubble. It goes back to the internet segmentation we were talking about where the internet essentially is a self-contained intranet in China rather than a global breaching entity. So as I just mentioned, but 96% of all web traffic in China are from servers within China itself. So if you go to any website or most sites in China, it's going to be probably from a server that's already in China. Um, Hong Kong and Macau are excluded from all this. They had the system after 1997 called uh, you know, it's one country, two systems, where Hong Kong Macau has its own currency, passports, economic system, internet system, and it's totally not related to that. So essentially, you also want to avoid the three T's of the internet, 
Um, three T's are three things to start with the letter T that are really, that the government does not want you to talk about in China. Does anyone have an idea maybe what they could be? Tacos. No. What's that? Tacos. Tacos. Tiananmen. Tiananmen, yes. Tiananmen is one. So we have Tibet. Don't talk about Tibet on the internet. It's like Fight Club. Don't talk about Fight Club. Don't talk about Tibet. Uh, if, you're a, if you're a foreign tourist going to Tibet, you can only go to uh, Lhasa, which is the capital, and wander around freely everywhere else. You have to be on a guided tour. Um, next is obviously Tiananmen. If you don't talk about Tiananmen. Uh, the shorthand for people on the internet in China is you call it uh, June or you call it May 35th because you can't refer to June 4th, so you refer to May, May 35th. Or June, yeah, whatever. It's confusing. Um, and then lastly is Taiwan. You don't want to talk about Taiwan. Talk about ta Taiwanese sovereignty. Talk about uh, Taiwan as a, as a state or a province. And the last thing I mentioned was uh, the, the Uyghur rights. I don't know if anyone's familiar with the, the province of Xinjiang in northwestern China, but they're a Turkic-speaking declared Chinese minority who they don't look like any other Chinese people. And they've been trying to, they're mostly Muslim, and they're trying to fight for their own rights. And it's, it's not going well. There are a lot of things that have been happening lately that's causing a lot of unrest. Um, as, I as I mentioned, I have to use a VPN when I'm in China, but China itself has very limited VPN usage. Almost all free VPN services are blocked. And I'm pretty sure that the ones that do work, that are paid, are kind of kind of like a thing that the government is slightly using, because a lot of the big VPNs, like Astral, Panda Pow, and things like that, they, every six months or so, they get blocked. Or if there's a big event that's happening, it gets turned off, and then they turn it back on. I think because most Chinese people are unwilling to pay the eight to 10 US dollars a month, and you have to have a, a credit card, like a Visa card, and most, most people in China use a, a card system called Union Pay, and it doesn't accept Union Pay. So that's probably why um, it, people use it. And then lastly, we got the, the three things I'm talking about here. We have the uh, river crabs, the 50 centers, and uh, Big Mama. So these are totally, like a river crab is a, I don't speak Chinese very well anymore. It's been a couple years. But it's this character. It, it essentially is a homonym. Uh, it sounds very similar to har harmony. So if your website gets blocked in China, your site has been harmonized. The government deems that your site is it's not harmonious to the, to the Chinese internet, so it gets harmonized. And you can't talk about harmonizing things. So you, ha you ha have something that sounds similar in Chinese, and it happened, the word happens to be river crab. So you talk, if you go on a Chinese WordPress message board, you talk about, what do I do if my site gets river crabbed? If my site gets river crabbed, what do I do? And sometimes even the word river crab gets blocked, so you then have to refer to it as an aquatic product. <laughs> so which is a, a, another third layer of, like understanding on that, which is just kind of blows my mind. They go, the Chinese internet users do a lot of things to go out of the way to try to not talk about something that gets them blocked. It's kind of impressive, actually. Um, next one is a 50 center, or like a Wu Mao. Um, that's someone who is paid essentially 50 cents to go on a message board and talk about, hey, uh, especially if you'll see this on like a New York Times article, uh, someone talks about some, something about like maybe Bloomberg getting blocked in China, and someone's like, Oh, you know, don't worry about this. Chinese government knows what they're doing. That's a 50 cent or someone who gets paid 50 cents to comment on a, on a blog in China to make things sound great, which is kind of, kind of funny. And, but there are supposedly over 300,000 people in China who do this as their, as their full-time job. Um, last one is your big mamas. And a big mama is uh, a social media site user or who's paid by a social media company to go in and curate all of the blog posts and twi uh, tweets and from like Sina Weibo or Renren or things like that, they get blocked. And they get paid by the, by the ISPs and these other social media companies because if they don't block them, then the government blocks them. And they want to be able to work in the, in the platform. And so a, a good example of this is the, the really big Tianjin uh, China explosion that happened last month. I don't know if anyone remembered that. It's a big chemical plant that exploded, killed a lot of people. And it was talked about a lot on Chinese social media for a good couple days. And then uh, this writer based in Hong Kong tweeted, hey, on Weibo, which is like Chinese tw uh, Twitter, essentially, uh, things are getting blocked now. So sometimes it happens where a discussion will be prompted for a couple days, and then the hammer will go down on it. And so and this is a really good example of 
One awesome way to help Chinese companies grow is that they block foreign companies and let a Chinese version come into place. So this is a really awesome graph about, because Flickr is blocked, something else like Flickr exists in China. Because Twitter is blocked, something like Twitter exists in China. And the advantage of these is that they are able to grow local companies, and also uh, the government is able to have the reins on them. And so you know, we have uh, one on the right, like WhatsApp, which is now owned by Facebook. Uh, there's a site called Weixin, or WeChat that gets used. LinkedIn is actually used in China. Um, LinkedIn actually does take down posts uh, if, in order to operate in, in China. Uh, then you have other sites like eBay is Taobao, and Facebook is Renren, just other examples. Um, people, people try to use WordPress, um, which is not blocked itself. WordPress, the software is not blocked, but you have to make sure that you fall within the government guidelines. So when we get down to WordPress specifically, is that essentially is your websites, the web in China is pretty slow. And if you're trying to reach the Chinese market, you have to understand this like you would anyone else uh, if you're trying to reach any other country that doesn't have a huge internet penetration. And the thing you have to realize is that because a lot of big things are blocked in China, like Facebook, Twitter, you want to avoid almost all external calls on your site. You don't want to connect to an external API. You don't want to call an out outbound uh, ad server. You don't want to call a Twitter widget, because all that stuff is going to break, and you're going to get a connection reset, and then your site's not going to load or can load s in 60 seconds. This is something I learned when I tried to build the Shanghai Beerwick website. You had a Twitter widget. Twitter breaks. The page adds 30 seconds to the load time. Um, obviously, avoid politically sensitive discussion. Um, you know, you have blocked IPs and domains, like certain IPs are blocked, certain domain names are blocked, and certain shared hosts, you don't, you don't want to be stuck on one where someone, someone's on that. Uh, Jetpack is actually blocked in, in China. This is a really big deal because a lot of Jetpack features connect to WordPress.com, and WordPress.com is broken and doesn't work in China. Things just don't work. If you are using a VPN, there are some features you can use, but uh, mostly things like the uh, the photon, uh, like related posts, uh, like anything that connects to WordPress.com is going gonna, is gonna to break something on your site. Almost everything related to Google is blocked. Google is almost entirely blocked in China. So that means you can't even use Google Fonts on your site. If you want to use a Google Font, you need to host it directly on your site, and you need to serve it directly on your site. And that's going to speed everything up and should make everything work a little better. As far as plugins itself that get blocked, additionally to like Jetpack and a lot of Google-related things, um, BB Press. I mean, discussion boards. It's not going to. You're not going to get blocked, but you have to keep an eye on the discussion. Uh, Yoast SEO only because if you want to use Facebook and Twitter cards, they're not going to work because you can't use Facebook and Twitter <laughs> unless you're using a you know VPN. And just general social media issues like Twitter widgets, Instagram widgets, things like that. So. Um, one thing to know if you're developing around censorship in China is you have to understand what plugins are blocked. And most of the, I think the big ones are things like Jetpack and anything related to Google. That's what you need to worry about the most. Limiting your reliance on outside like APIs and sources. And this is actually a really big one. And this is a discussion that a lot of people are having is you actually might want to reconsider the use of SSL. Only 3% of sites in China use SSL um, because the government can it's more difficult for them to block individual pages. And a, a big deal that happened recently is that Wikipedia went to full SSL recently. And a lot of people in China were upset about that because uh, in order to access like, articles about Tiananmen Square and things like that, those individual articles were blocked on, on Wikipedia in China. But because it went full SSL, uh, they have to block the entire domain. And so now nothing for Wikipedia is, block, is available, which is a, was a really big deal. They don't block anything that's SSL. It's that it's SSL makes it more difficult for them to like, force a man in the middle attacks and change your connections and force connection resets. It's by the nature of SSL being a secure socket layer is that they can't, they can't jump into it. So they just have to block the full SSL connection altogether. So uh, another thing is uh, government hosting registration. Is if you host your site within China proper, you need to have a government license that you submit to the Chinese government that says, my website is under review. Please make sure there's nothing bad about it. 
And once that happens, you become liable for the content. And if your site has a discussion or something like that, you can be fined, or your site can be taken down, or you can be arrested. So this is a big deal. Some countries are starting to have this now. Um, as I mentioned, avoid politically sensitive discussion. Um, it's another important is because you have to avoid politically sensible, uh, responsible, politically sensitive discussion, you also have to know that you're responsible for your own users. So the users who use your site, you have, you have responsibility to, to enforce them, unfortunately. So this, these are unfortunate realities of trying, if you want to reach the Chinese market right now, that you have to consider. It's not to say that, I mean, you can, I'll get to more about how you can help kind of fight all of this, but if you're looking to be successful in China, this is something you need to, you need to be consider. Um, Hong Kong-based hosting, if you don't want to get an ICP registration, a lot of big companies, they have their hosting based out of Hong Kong, because the internet's freer there and you, can, you have more control over your, your sensitive d data information. So here's my site. Um, this is greatfire.org. This is the website you use to check if your website's blocked. This website is why GitHub was DDoSed four months ago. It's because this website makes it very apparent and very uh, straightforward on how a website is blocked or not blocked in China. So here is my, my site, jpgambo.com. You can see uh, last year there was a time when my site was blocked. And then later, later in the year it was kind of blocked, maybe not blocked in some provinces. And then by the end of the year, for some reason, it was back online in China. I don't understand why. I, there's no way to know. There's no way to talk about it because the Chinese government is very opaque about the internet. They, they maintain that they have a free and open internet when it's obviously not the case. So when I was living in China, I used to use Instagram a lot. And then I, pretty recently, it came to be the fact that Instagram got blocked. And so here's an example of what Instagram looks like now, is that every day someone tries to test it out and Instagram is now blocked, Facebook is now blocked. And this is what it's going to look like when you test your site. And it's a really interesting tool. And you click on each one, and you can get a speed report. And it's from four different provinces in China. They won't tell you which ones or their IP addresses they're testing from. But it's a really awesome tool if you want to get to know uh, how your site is performing in the Chinese market. So if you do get blocked uh, in any country, uh, make sure to confirm it. If, you're in, if you want to check your website's blocked in Iran, blockediniran.com is a great tool, greatfire.org for China, or you blacklist for Russia and Angeli Web for Turkey. And you, if you do get blocked, there are some, th some things you can do. You can ask your host for help, because they will help you. Uh, you can ask to check for noisy neighbors. Is someone else on the, on the same server you're on also getting blocked? Is that what's causing it? Uh, or is the domain itself that's getting blocked? They can help you figure that out. And if you ask them, and there are, most, ser most services will help you move to a different environment or an IP address or something that maybe, maybe it's a data center, maybe it's an IP address, maybe it's your domain. But we'll, at WP Engine, if you come to me and, and that happens, I will help you out. Uh, and I'll help you figure out what we can do to fix that. What was, what was the previous tool? That's greatfire.org. On the previous page, that was greatfire.org? Yeah. Okay. Question. Yes. You also check on the slowness of the, uh, the status. Yes, that's also a big, a big thing. That comes back to. Uh, limiting your external calls um, is that if you have to rely on a different server and that server might be blocked or might be slowed down intentionally, because on, on Great Fire, there is actually one that says, uh, it says otherwise restricted. And there's one that says it's like suspiciously slow, is that some sites are just slowed down but not entirely blocked. But that's the, that, uh, that, is the, that load's not up there, right? No, no, I think that they I'll keep updating the site. And I, actually, I used the, the Chrome Dev Console to kind of finagle this a little bit to make it fit the MUDs that I wanted to show. So, <laughs> um, And then what, what can the WordPress community do? This is the big thing, is that WordPress itself is continue to support non-English WordPress, because that's really important, is that, I mean, I don't speak Chinese very well. I don't speak. I mean, I speak English, and pretty much everything else is I can maybe take a taxi and order a beer. Those are like my two benchmarks when I go to somewhere. Um, you want to follow and understand the Open Net, initiative, Open Net Initiative. This is a great organization that will allow you to track internet censorship in different countries. And it's, it's great for understanding a lot, even some of the technical understanding of, of how sites get blocked. If you speak other languages, you should really contribute to WordPress core. And to help plugin translations is that if the more people get using WordPress, the, the, like, the less it can be ignored. 
especially with some plugins and other, other features. Obviously, talking about it is that when people come to me and people talk to me at WP Engine and they have trouble in China, some people have no idea that their site can even be blocked in China. And so the more people are, are understanding of this, is the better we all as a community can come together and kind of work around it, kind of fight it, and just try to help understand the way the system works. And then lastly is the democratization of just keep publishing, keep talking about it, and that's, I think that's really important. That's, that's, these are the, the main things that you can do if you want to actively try to fight this um, based on your already understanding of, of the way the internet works, especially in China. But that's all I have right now. Um, my name is John Gamboa. I tweet at J Gamboa, and please review me. Thank you. Yeah, there. I mean, like, there's a, a Chinese uh, WordPress.org.cn, which is not affiliated with WordPress.org, is a message where people try to talk about this. They host their sites in, in, in different countries, and like in Hong Kong, and they try to talk about what they can do to not get blocked. And people who use VPNs, I have coworkers uh, who I, I worked uh, I worked at a at Microsoft at my last job in Shanghai, and at Microsoft we had an open pipe. They let us, they let us uh, access all the websites in China without a problem. Uh, and so my coworkers, they discovered things like about Tiananmen Square that they had no idea ever existed, that they had to be told about because they happened to work behind an open internet connection. So that's really common for foreign companies who are trying to operate. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, Um, my understanding is they, they, work, they work well, is that um, sometimes, like, sometimes the IP addresses get blocked sometimes, but I don't, I don't have a lot of personal experience using it. I know that I had a friend who used it, and he had some problems with, with it, but it, he ended up just changing his port like all the time. So, Anyone else? Uh, nope. Yeah. I think just to clarify, if you're saying, you know, as an expat living there, you had to have a, a VPN right. you know, outside of China to access yeah. that you would normally access. So <coughs> were you saying earlier that you know, routinely the government will discover some of these VPNs and block access to those? Yes. Or, okay. So it's, so it's tricky that. because like, when the, so there was a, a big uh, internet conference or economic summit that was in China last year, and the town that it was in, they turned off the Great Firewall for like a week. And when the Olympics are going back to Beijing here in a couple of years, they'll probably do that again too. So um, it's it's tricky. I think that they understand that they can't block everything entirely because if they blocked even all VPNs, then it it's already causing a really big problem for businesses. There's a, a article just I think in the Wall Street Journal this week that talked about, uh, or the LA Times actually, um, something like 3.6 billion dollars of economic loss just for Google uh, not being able to work in China, uh, which is a pretty big deal. Is that it? All right. If anyone wants to talk to me afterward, uh, I'll be outside. So thank you very much, everyone.